Hi, everyone. We are talking about entrepreneurship today. Do you want to be an entrepreneur? Maybe you want to start that business that you've always thought of. Maybe you've got a teenager that is also wanting to be an entrepreneur. The stats are actually 76% of this next generation want to be a business owner. And so that's what we're going to talk about. I'm going to talk, give you seven things to think about, seven things to think about as you're uh, thinking about starting your own business. And this was inspired by, I'm going to read the email that came through our office. Uh, somebody had emailed our office, said, hi, Dr. Karen, I'd like to know how to start my own business. I wonder if you have any materials on that. Well, thank you. Uh, so we're talking about entrepreneurship, but we haven't met. My name is Dr. Karen. I'm the CEO and co-founder of a global leadership coaching company called DK Leadership. Uh, on, the, on another side, my husband and I have started five different businesses that have all been very successful over the last 20 years uh, in healthcare, in real estate, and in product development. And so the topic about entrepreneurship, I'm very excited about. Anybody who asks me about entrepreneurship, I love it. Um, I love uh, working with entrepreneurs. We have a women's entrepreneur mastermind. Um, I love teaching about it to young people. Uh, we have a career course that we actually help uh, people actually find their career path. And so for anybody who's even thinking about being an entrepreneur, uh, this video is actually for you. This one is actually for you. And I'm going to be teaching you seven different things uh, to, uh, to as you're kind of like diving in. And so, um, you know, and just kind of like the high level, again, if we haven't met our company, DK Leadership, we work with businesses around the world, uh, all different sectors, all industries, and we really help them in three buckets. We help them in terms of building and growing their business. We help them in terms of leadership development for their relationships, both at the office as well as in their family, and then also in their mental health. That, that's kind of our, that's our niche. That's our specialty is leadership, emotional intelligence, and how when you have those skills, it actually helps you in, in all three buckets. And so when we're talking about entrepreneurship, I'm going to be giving you the seven different things to think about. Um, we're really talking about helping people to become more aware of their emotional intelligence um, as they're actually uh, leading into this amazing world around entrepreneurship. All right, ready? Ready? Got your pen and paper, everybody? So whether or not, again, you're a parent, maybe you're an, an adult going, I've always wanted to have that business. I haven't done it. Um then this this is video this video is for you. Be sure to like this uh, like um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. By the way, um, that actually certainly helps us to know who's actually engaged, and uh, we really love to serve people here on YouTube. All right. So the first thing that I want you to think about is your area of business, and so entrepreneurship. So what it really is it? Somebody who is an entrepreneur, uh, they are they are creative. They have they they're an ideas person. They're like you know I think. I want to create a product um, or create a service to really help somebody. They're, they're, they're a creative person. And so, um, so the first thing you want to do is think about what area of business you would actually like to go into. There are hundreds upon thousands of different areas you could actually focus on. We have a career course called Find Your Dream Career and to help people kind of narrow down their focus because entrepreneurship is a massive umbrella and the idea you want to start kind of like honing that area is trying to figure out which kind of laneway what little area do you want to really start putting your focus and so some people know with what to do for that and other people are like i have no idea so that's a good place to start that's actually a good place to start is is to take that course whether it's our course or somebody else's course uh but to really kind of help to figure out what area of business do I really want to go into? And in our course that we teach, uh, we get people to kind of like look at a few different sectors. And a lot of times we actually get them to kind of merge it all together. So when you get all the assessments and you put it all together, the writing is on the wall. So, um, and so that's the area you want to kind of focus on. So is it in, um, is it in finance? Is it in accounting? Is it in personal development? Is it in real estate? Is it in fitness? Is it like, there's so many different kind of areas or kind of sectors. And so in our course, one of the things we teach is you want to start kind of finding your area. And a lot of times it's actually two areas kind of in, in combination with each other. So that's kind of like your first thing is to figure out what area maybe do you actually want to get into. The second area is what is, uh, who is your target audience? Um, who's your target audience that you actually want to serve? 
there might be a particular age group, a demographic that you just really, really love working with them. So for example, when I first started my very first business, I was 22 years old. Um, I finished my master's in counseling and I was asked by a doctor to set up a practice within his medical office. And I was very young. I was 22. And so I loved working with teenagers. I love young people. I love the energy, their curiosity, their questions. And so that became my target audience. That was, it was working with teenagers and their families. That's where I started almost 30 years ago. And, and so that was, that's where I started. And I just really kind of focused in at that, with that demographic, that, that demographic. Um, and so that's what you want to figure out is first of all, so for me, the area was around psychology, uh, psychology, um, and kind of, I would say psychology and mental health and also personal development. I did a lot of with what I was doing was really around personal development, but the target audience was actually teenagers. And that's where I started. Okay. So that's number two, everybody. Uh, number three is, um, and by the way, if you want to kind of actually, um, there, there's lots and lots of different tools that we have to kind of really help all levels of leaders. But if this is kind of resonating with you, uh, we have a really great, uh, one pager on the kind of the 10 different steps that every business needs to have to properly grow and scale. You're going to want to get your hands on that. So in the, um, in the comments below, just write business, write business. And someone from our team will send that out to you. And that is a free resource to help uh, you think about as you're actually kind of growing and building your business to making sure that you're looking and identifying these 10 things. So just write down business and somebody from our team will give that to you. Okay. So where are we? So, uh, area for, step one is know with what your area of business is. Number two is figure with what your target audience is. Number three, are you ready? Everybody listen to the needs. If you've seen my Ted talk, you will have seen me talk with a story that I was, um, basically in a session with a, uh, a teenager. She was about 17 at the time. And I had all these teens as my clients and you know, my practice was pretty full already by that point. But it was the way that this one particular girl said to me very, very clearly in my office that there was a need in her school that there was no, there was a lack of resources on building confidence. Okay. And that, and the way that she said it, it was so clear. She's like, nothing's being done about this in my school. And the way that she looked at me, I knew that there was the need. I was going to try to figure out how do you build confidence in teenagers? And so from there, I got my hands on a lot of really good resources and I created a, a workshop and started doing public speaking and motivational speaking in schools. And that literally transformed my career. From that, I started getting corporate sponsors to sponsor my work. I started doing national speaking tours. I started producing television. I started uh, syndicating TV shows. I got into radio, regular television. The speaking uh, really started increasing. I was actually able to charge a lot more, writing more books. Everything kind of started, kind of snowballed out of that one conversation, which was helping teenagers feel more confident. And so that's your number three, everybody, is you really want to think about what is the need? Who am I serving? What are their needs? Okay. Number four, you ready? Number four, get yourself a mentor. Uh, mentor is a game changer. When I, when my practice was kind of like starting to, to really grow and I was starting to do speaking tours across the country, I remember thinking, Oh my goodness, my, all my education was in psychology and in counseling. I have no business training. Um, by this point, I'm like, I am a successful entrepreneur. I was making very good money. I was having great impact. I was loving with what I was doing. Uh, but I really knew I want to kind of grow and scale at, 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 the, at the next level. And I thought, what do I do? Do I go back to school? Do I get an MBA? Uh, no, I decided to get myself a mentor. I got myself a mentor that knows business. I needed to understand business. I need to understand how it worked, uh, how to develop it, how to grow it, how to scale it, all of that. And so I got myself a mentor. So that's number four is get yourself a mentor. Uh, we don't need to be all things to all people. We, we don't have to be experts in all fields. We just have to understand what do we know and what don't we know and find the people in your life to help teach it to you. Okay. So get yourself a mentor. And my encouragement is get yourself a business mentor, a business coach, um, you know, or take courses. There's courses, you know, we have a women's entrepreneur mastermind. That's where I actually teach all of these tools in a very tactical way. Uh, 
you know, there's courses you can take, there's books you can read, but, but get somebody who you have access to you, because once you start your idea, there's gonna be a lot of roadblocks and there's gonna be a lot of hurdles. And so it's really important that you have access to somebody to really coach you and to mentor you in your endeavor. Okay. Number five is just start, you know, a lot of the, um, Sometimes, you know, a lot of us, we want to get everything perfect and we want to figure out every single thing. And then, you know, and then we kind of keep putting off, keep putting it off. And um, I'm a quick start. When I get an idea, I like to put it into, into motion right away. Um, and so it's really important just to start and know, manage expectations. You're going to hit a lot of problems and a lot of roadblocks and a ton of rejection and a lot of things are not going to go well. Manage your risk, manage your financing. Never risk more than you're afraid to lose. That's as my mother would tell me. Um, but it is import, important to start. So I started uh, I started with my business uh, part-time uh, to kind of making sure that it kind of, you know, got it on its feet. And I had another job to kind of pay my bills. And so I was actually doing telemarketing, everybody, for three years while I built my business because I had bills to pay. So I was building my business and then I did telemarketing on the side to really, uh, to make sure I had some kind of stability with finances. And so that's, that's a whole other module. That's a whole other, uh, video on level of risk. I'm actually very low level. I'm a very low risk taker. Everything is very calculated. Um, but that's how I did it. Okay. Because I had bills to pay. I had school debt. I paid for my whole education. Um, and so you, you want to, you want to make sure that you're starting, but you're starting smart. Um, I'm not a big fan of debt. I, I, I don't like it at all. And so I, for me, I want to start with security. And so that's actually how I did it. Uh, once you actually start your idea, this is number six, everybody, uh, you want to get feedback from people from your clients, customers actually right away. You're going to, there's a lot of pieces that people are going to like, and a lot of things that they don't like and get ruthless with your feedback. Feedback is, it can be super painful and it can be super brutal, but the only way you're gonna grow and your business is gonna grow is to get feedback from your audience that you're actually trying to serve. Some of my best ideas have come when I have been so careful of listening to that feedback, that constructive feedback. And when I have resisted or I've kind of gone off, that's when I've made some, uh, bad choices. Okay. So you have to really make sure you're staying close to that feedback with what your customer is actually saying. Um, that is number six and number seven, I can't even read my own handwriting. Uh, oh yes. And number seven, huh, try again. Okay. That is my, that's my seventh tip. Everybody is once you've got your idea and you're creating your product or your service, and you're trying to serve the need to your target audience and you're starting, and now you're asking for that feedback. Now what you want to do, and you've gotten that mentor to kind of help, help guide you and to shape you. Now what you, when you've gotten that feedback and let's say there's been a lot of constructive feedback, then your seventh piece is you actually with want to try again. It is very, it is very much of an, um, evolving process. It's like you're serving your audience, you're developing your product or service, you're putting it together, you're managing, um, your level of risk, you're starting, you're putting it into motion, you're getting feedback, you're learning with what they like this, but they don't really like this. So you're making adaptations, you're reiterating, you're making changes, and then you actually kind of go back to the market. And so it's very much, it's like this, it's like a dance. Um, and it is amazing. I love entrepreneurship. I was um, honored to be nominated for two years in a row to the Canadian RBC Women Entrepreneur Award. I absolutely love this area. I also know it can be really, really tough. And so that's why you want to find other people that are in a like-minded community to really grow with you because it is amazing, but it can be really challenging. It can also be really lonely. Okay. So it's really important as you're going through this whole process that you're finding like-minded people to journey with you on that. So there you go, everybody. Seven ways to start your business. I hope this has been helpful for you. Make sure you like our uh, YouTube channel and look forward to seeing you on one of the other videos. Definitely check out other videos. If you have other ideas you want us to focus in on, make sure you put that in the comments actually below as well.